We're on with Doron Fagelson, key account executives with Data Arts Media Practice, looking after a portfolio of uh, client work uh, in the arts and technology space. A very interesting conversation we had about the trends overall in the art market. And now I want to turn to something that um, is borderline incomprehensible to me, which is the NFTs and what the notion of what is art and what is collectible and what is tradable on all of these all of these platforms. And even if I can be persuaded that NFT is a legitimate um, collectible object, I can never be persuaded that NFT is a good name for the category. I mean, who comes up with a non-fungible <laughs> token to describe a work of art? So what is it and where is the world going, Doron? Yeah, yes, th thank you, Alexei. Um, I, I do agree that NFT does uh, come across initially as a sort of a very strange term for essentially um, a, a digital asset um, that includes with it a, a certificate of, of authenticity. Um, I mean, essentially uh, an NFT, it gives you sort of a, uh, like a digital contract of ownership. Um, and so it can be applied to digital art, but it can be applied to really sort of any collectible, any collectible rather. Um, uh, and people are also uh, experimenting with ways of, of actually tying them to physical objects as well. Um, which we don't have to get into, but I think that the the big story of the uh, art market in 2021 has certainly been this uh, explosion of NFTs, um, and uh, certainly many many more people have heard of the term NFT, uh, whereas perhaps you know a year or two ago would never have heard the term before. Indeed, and it opened um, opened the whole wave of new technology platforms. Right, those, those NFT have to be created digitally they have to be displayed or presented i guess digitally they have to be traded so can you can you tell me where all of this mysterious activity is taking place yeah i i, I would i would even say that that um that, you know as much as having sort of new nomenclature for digital assets that we've never heard of before like nfts um there's also a whole kind of lexicon of of, of words specifically uh, tied to the actual process of creating them. So, for example, the way that the industry now refers to creating a new FT, it's mm -hmm. called minting. Um, and so there are platforms that allow artists, say, to uh, take a digital artwork that they've created and then go and mint that uh, digital artwork, which essentially just means it is registered on a blockchain uh, with a smart contract. Um, and there are many platforms like you know, OpenSea, for example, um, it's one of the biggest marketplaces for NFTs that will provide uh, artists with the tools to do that um, and then allow that artist to sell their digital assets as, as NFTs through those platforms. But um, as much as there are you know, specialist startups uh, that have developed um, platforms and technologies to do this, um, it's also now uh, got the attention of bigger players as well, um, which is also quite fascinating in such a small space of time. You, you know, you have Sotheby's, uh, which I believe partnered with a dedicated NFT platform last year. And just as recently as December, Christie's announced that they were also partnering with OpenSea. Um, so institutions now, as well as, you know, technology, uh, uh, you know, agile savvy uh, startups are um, fully, I think, invested in these new digital assets. So it's a really in exciting uh, and interesting space. Indeed. Um, based on your, your uh, observer of the industry, do you expect this to be more than a fad? Do you expect it to keep growing next year and beyond? Yeah, so uh, about a year ago, actually, I think it was about exactly a year ago, um, I think I attended a clubhouse talk on NFTs. And one of the questions I asked at that time was, uh, is this more of a fad? Is this going to just be sort of a flash in the pan um, and perhaps not last? Uh, because of course, you know, cryptocurrencies are so volatile um, and many FTs are actually bought with cryptocurrency. But I think, think if you look at how things have played out over the last year, it's hard to see NFTs going away. Um, I, I think that they've had enormous amount of attention, not just from within the art world and big industry players, but also you know, celebrities such as Paris Hilton, you know, lots of people have kind of entered uh, into this brave new world. Um, and I, I see it as definitely uh, a new 
area mm. of, of mm. digital art that is probably here to stay. Well, it's interesting you said you attended a Clubhouse talk on whether um, NFTs are just a fad. It turned out the Clubhouse was a fad and NFTs seem to well, persist. <laughs> I want to talk very briefly about um, the other thing that happened in 2021, at least on my kind of in my field of vision that is was not NFTs. And what happened was on my Instagram feed in recent months, there was a bunch of posts from friends who said, oh, I'm the last person in New York to go to the interactive Van Gogh exhibition, which assumed that everybody saw it. And um, I've personally been not to Van Gogh, but to a few other immersive arts, the projected art, these rooms full of uh, beautiful flowers, dynamic, interactive art, fascinating stuff. And it seemed like because most of New York has seen it, there's a lot of money in, in that. And there's a lot of more of these shows uh, popping up. So that is also a trend, isn't it? What's going on there? Indeed, yes. Uh, this is definitely another story um, from 2021. Uh, I mean, I think that prior to 2021, you did have um, a, a set, you did have several sort of immersive um, art experiences that uh, you could find, but they just really, I think, weren't so much on people's radar. Um, certainly, if you look at 2021, yeah, it's definitely, you know, uh, the Van Gogh immersive experience is sort of the one that has been most reported on um, and also probably the most visited. I think it's had over 3 million mm -hmm. visitors to date. You know, it's a far-flung exhibit in many, many cities across the world. Um, and uh, it, it's supposed to be a really cool 360-degree immersive uh, experience, um, you know, really seeing his works from many different uh, angles. Um, there's many others, actually. Um, I know in 2020, for example, the Louvre created uh, a VR version of the Mona Lisa. Uh, so it, that was actually an exhibit that you could simply view online. You didn't even ha actually have to be at the Louvre to do that if you had it, the VR glasses uh, to, 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 to see the work. Um, I know that the Met uh, last year also partnered with Verizon to launch this, the Met Unframed um, exhibit. Uh, and that was also immersive. It was also partly a gaming experience because what you could do um, uh, as a visitor was not only actually look at those paintings up close with VR glasses, you, you could also uh, kind of go into virtual galleries in a sort of an interactive way, kind of using a tap to move interface on your phone. Um, and you could also uh, uh, actually sort of complete certain games to unlock certain art pieces that you could then sort of look at in your own home on your own walls using uh, augmented reality. Um, so part of the, I think, appeal of some of these new immersive experiences, they're, they're really also quite yeah. interactive as, as well as being sort of like visually very impressive. I think it's fascinating because it it's effectively uh, brings, I mean, to use a terrible cliche, but it does bring the arts to the masses in so many forms that are easily con easily consumable. And I, and I, and I think, uh, it, it's a wonderful thing, making it so much more accessible, so much more understandable, and perhaps relatable. Before we conclude, Daron, I have to ask you something. Mm -hmm. How about we have the same conversation a year from now, and then uh, you tell us all about the things or non-things that will be considered art or art experience at that point. Something tells me there will be a whole bunch of new things that we'll see and be surprised about in 22. I, I would love that, Alexei, and I'm willing even to uh, make a bold prediction, which is always a very bad idea. But I, I would guess that one of the things we'll be talking about at this time next year will be the metaverse. Uh, but let's just leave it at that. Good. The meta conversation about the, the verse or the conversation about meta. I'm still confused. Anyway, Don, <laughs> thanks very much for your time and sharing all the insights. Fascinating stuff. Thanks again.